Hey, it's all bringing you the word of Warcraft, and today we're doing the third palcast. Today's palcast is going to be about class balance and how we approach this as armchair developers. And right now we have Tag and Jui joining me. We tackled class balance based on a tweet that Celis Talon had posted on Twitter uh, quite some time ago. So we threw ourselves into this argument with trying to figure out just how to balance uh, certain specs within a class. We take a look at buffs and nerfs and even some more controversial ideas like removing uh, specs altogether. We also touch into how gear falls into the mix including tier set pieces, trinkets, legendaries, and so on. I want to apologize in advance for the volume levels. It's a little bit hard to pick up Tag and Jewy even though I tried to turn them up a little bit. So you might need to turn your volume up just a little bit. Of course, be mindful, you're gonna be, you might be listening to, to my voice be a little bit louder. That said, I can kind of identify us now. You know what I sound like. Tag's gonna sound like the guy on the radio, and you'll probably have maybe a hard time listening to Jewy. Well, that said, let's get this thing going. Enjoy. Hey, buddies. Hey, soul. Hi. Um, Jewy, did I, uh, did, uh, Tag tell you anything about what's gonna go on for this podcast? I was supposed to tell him. No, I was just asking. <laughs> I've been too busy mashing buttons in the LFR. Uh, as long as that doesn't pick up on the while you're talking. No, I'm I, I'm done now. So. Oh, okay. Did you uh did you take a look at the tweet? Me? Yeah. Yeah, a little like it's. I kind of get the gist of what he was like asking. Okay. Uh, Julie, this, uh, this podcast is about, um, is about game balance and how the, and how, like, like kind of how the developers try to tackle it. Uh, there was a tweet that, that one of them put out and I'll, and I'll read it to you or, or you can look at a link that Mary put in, uh, he put it into chat. If you scroll up, look for the little thing that looks like a fade dragon and, uh, and, and you can take a look at the tweet. Sparkle um, dragon. Yeah, 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 whatever. Uh, but basically, it's, uh, well, I'll just read it anyway. So it reads off as, so here, here we go. Interesting game balance design question that we commonly deal with, but I'd love to hear you, I'd love to hear you all thoughts on, suppose you're in the following situation. Class X has three specs, A, B, and C. With equal gear level and skill, they average 100, 80, and 70 DPS. However, since A wins in theory, the more skilled and geared players prefer A. This results in numbers looking more like uh, 100, 70, and 50 on average. You want to better balance the specs of this class. How do you buff or nerf each spec? So before we get into, into it, I'll let, I'll let Dewey uh, soak it in for a little bit. Um, at least when, when I saw this, uh, when I saw this tweet the other week, I was looking at some of the responses and some of them were like, they were just dogging the developer on it, and uh, like both on Twitter and on and on MMO Champion and other places that linked it. And people would be like, you know, fuck this guy. This guy doesn't know what he's doing. He has to ask the community for help, and uh, you know, he should be doing his job rather than be, you know, rather than waste his time uh, uh, with with players and and whatever. At least for me, I, I don't know, I feel kind of bad for dogging back on players, but I'm like, dude, these people are tripping. Like, I don't know, like, like for me, it's, for me, the developer's just like, hey, he just wants to share thoughts with the community. I don't see anything, you know, really wrong with that. I think, I think it's just a way to, I think it's just a way for him to help other people understand what it is that goes through developers' minds when it comes to, uh, trying to do class balance instead of being so close-minded and focused on on their special class. It's like, oh, you know, it's all me, 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 when, uh, you know, the developers, they have to think about um, how, uh, you know, how any change will, will, will impact everybody. Yeah, like, and I find it, the thing that bothers me the most is, like, he's throwing this question out there in a vacuum, and it's kind of like how developers operate in general. You know, and he's just showing people kind of like the process of throwing ideas out and see what sticks. Yeah, like, well, I'm sure that he's not really, I'm, I'm sure that in that some part of him is like, hey, maybe they'll give like a good answer or a good thoughtful answer that might be something outside the box that 
they Blizzard are like, you know, they're thinking about, uh, you know, they're, they're they're taking approaches in a certain way. You know, they you know they're used to thinking about it like this and this and this. But you know, players are smart. They you know they can think of like some pretty crazy and amazing things. And if they can think of a way to possibly tackle uh, tackle that problem in a different way, you know, that might be uh, that 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 could be to their benefit. But I think players aren't quite seeing that. They, they're just seeing it like, you know, oh, you want us to do your job for you? And shit like that. And, but some people did give answers, though. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm more saying it's like, you know, kind of like a read between the lines kind of thing with uh, how he's asking, you know, the community what they're looking at. But like when a dev is in a meeting with a group of his fellow developers, you know, they're going to look at the numbers, the theoretical numbers that people theory craft out there and go, Okay, if this is what they're theory crafting, which is more than likely right, because they, this is what people have their degrees in that are usually doing it, is crunch numbers. You know, how do we balance this? Maybe not even in terms of gameplay, like the class in the vacuum, but in fights, which is like what I was thinking about. The biggest part is like the class that comes to mind when we come to three classes A, B, C, one does more, middle, whatever, is mage. That's the one that I think of every time when I oh, think of something. Oh, mage like that. has to come first, huh? It's not like hunters or warlocks. What? Like, well, uh, fuck, uh, fuck warlocks because Ned plays a warlock and hunters are. They just lie on the ground all the time. <laughs> <laughs> um, but You're I nice. think of one of the reason I think of mages is because they are so. They have the three most standout fights I've ever thought of when it comes to classes and in terms of just balance. Like, for me, Dragon Soul, heroic. Spine of Deathwing. So far back. The first person to kill Heroic Spine of Deathwing was the, I think it was Korean. It was an Asian guild. Um, and they had like six arcane mages stacked on the fight to burn down the stupid plates. And then you go to fire mages in general, which is like the end game mage spec where you get a ton of crit. And then there was, um, I think it was Heroic Emperors from Bogushan Vaults where they stacked frost mages for the CC so they didn't have to worry about the ads for the whole fight. You remember just... mages very well for someone who doesn't play a mage. Well, it's because it's, they've always been unique in the fact that they are three specs that had very weird effects on very high-end progression, which is how I think, you know, balance all the numbers for the, one, the normal, you know, normal heroic raiders which is the now current heroic, you know, balance the numbers for them because they're usually not pushing their class to the utmost. And if they are, they should be rewarded by doing more damage or doing better at certain things in heroic normal fights and pulling better numbers than see, the uh, and, and Joe Schmo. So I see challenges there because, I mean, of course there are disagreements among, among the community as to how, um, how a class should be balanced? Should it be should it be balanced for the most elite top shit players, or should it be balanced for, like like what you're saying, like the mid core, uh, and and so on and so forth? And I don't know, like it's it, it's hard to, it, it's hard to tell that because the elite players they'll shift to whatever's like the thing that will get them the highest output no matter what, you know. So so. It, it, it's it's almost like kind of a game of whack-a-mole where where developers you know where, where the design team is trying to nerf and buff and compensate but the best players they're going to uh you know and, and in a lot of ways they're probably going to be smarter than like the test teams and the designers over at blizzard side they'll be able to maximize you know those kinds of specs for those specific fights better than better than blizzard probably could and then again blizzard will have to like compensate it and react to that but it's like too late uh, at that point because you already have these different, uh, you know, the, these different levels of skill between players. They they've already shifted, um, you know. So, it, it, I don't know. It, it's like a whack a mole slash cat and mouse game that that does that the design team just can't seem to win. I I don't think I think the problem is you're looking at it from a winning standpoint, and winning. they're just it I. They're given a, you know, kind of a crapshoot, kind of a shitty end of this bargain here. Because no matter what, someone's going to complain. Because they're, you know, Zero's going to complain, Frost sucks, and he's forced to play a spec he hates playing because he has to play Fire. 
because he loves frost until the day he dies because he gets his little pet water elemental dude he zero changes like on the fly he'll change to whatever whatever he needs to. it's me yeah, that's like he loves he never frost. changes right like okay, i okay. mean like i'm talking like cedar Vorgamar. he played frost even though it was by far suboptimal see but. again like i don't know how you remember these things <laughs> You remember? I just things. remember mages really well because it's literally that is. Siege of Ogremar was yeah. like twenty five years ago, man. I don't know how you can, <laughs> how you can call on that. But like, I just I recall it because fucking Cata destroyed him on meters and we were <laughs> zero's face all the time. No, but well, Cata destroying people on meters. My, how the times have changed. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I thought Cata still like decent at what he does. Bummer. You mean that being a lewd war? Is that? I thought that's what he was good at. I was thinking of performance. Is it because you're smoking them, Jerry? <laughs> I don't know. I haven't done anything with them in a while. I know. Well, the other week, didn't you guys do a uh, like couple runs here and there together? Yeah, we do. We usually do, but lately I haven't been. Uh, too busy beating, beating people down. Yeah, you know, making fun of me and my Void Lords. Well, fuck the Void Lords, man. It's, it's all about the Naru here. Anyway, so, uh, Drew, you had time to take a look at the tweet thing? Yes. Any initial thoughts on that? I mean, my only thought was, you know, it's a valid question. Why not just answer the question? Go for it, then. Well, I mean, obviously, you have one that performs way better than the other two, so the other two, one of... I wouldn't... I would nerf the top one a tiny bit, maybe bring it down to maybe the 90 area, and then kind of, you know, buff the other two a little bit. Yeah, but then um, the last part of the tweet said... And I, I didn't say it, that's my bad. The last part of the tweet said that every other class and spec, you know, we'll just assume that they are at 100 so do you want to nerf uh that you know the best spec for this class by 10 percent? and basically because of course you know the community is going to be like well fuck you know fuck all this you're making you know you're making the class uh shittier than all the other ones outright because you're trying to buff the other two classes or you're trying to buff the other two specs fuck you blizzard i think that would be i think that would be the nature response from them right I don't mind having the main class a little bit weaker. Uh, sorry, I, I thought you were saying that you wanted to nerf spec A. Uh, to yeah, like uh, that's what I'm saying. Like, make it a little bit weaker and then buff the other two. Uh, I mean, I mean, I that that's that's my um, that's my assumption though. Like, if you if you take that class and you take its best spec and you make it so that it's only within 90% of all other specs, people are going to be pissed. They're like, well, fuck this, I'm going to... But let's pretend that this is a mage class for the sake of uh, making this easier. You know, so, well, fuck that, you're going to make me re-roll Shaman because mages, uh, cause mages are shit now because they do 10% less overall DPS than, uh, you know, th than the next class. This, this game is stupid, I quit. But what would, what would your approach be, uh, Ted? For me, it's like, it's not even, like, I think in general, like, he brought it up later on, like, you know, each one has their niche. But I really think, like, you know, when you start balancing to this, you start thinking of this deep question, it's like, who's really going to be optimizing the class and who's really going to care about playing it the most? And it's like, maybe you were right when we were talking earlier about balancing around who you balance around. Maybe you do focus on the normal and heroic people and the mythic people. You just, like, let them figure it out. You know, they do what they're going to do. And obviously it's going to skew the numbers, but, you know, make sure everyone else's numbers around normal and heroic are, you know, balanced. Because that's where, you know, your core group is going to be at. It feels like um, one of the big problems that are, that's presented in this question is that you have the skilled players that are moving towards the, you know, whatever the fuck spec happens to be the most high performance thing. Um, and I, and, and I mentioned earlier that, you know, if you try to compensate and you try to 
and you try to effectively balance them out, you're going to find that, you know, the most skilled players are going to once again jump to the highest thing, and then the numbers are going to get skewed again, where the best spec is going to is going to still be the, the absolute best spec, and you know other uh, other levels of skill between players they kind of you know they they fu they fudge up the numbers and it makes it so that the other two specs just aren't as just can't just aren't as good not because they're not as good but um but, well okay maybe it is because they're not as good but it just makes it seem worse that uh you know you have whoever the fuck um represent represent those those you know lesser specs I, I think the approach that I wanted to take, and I still kind of want to take, is to take like the best spec, so spec A for a mage, you know, take that and just, for the most part, kind of leave it alone, um, except just just make it like a really high skill kind of thing, you know, if you want to do the best DPS, choose spec A because that's like the hot shit, that's what the best players are doing right now, okay, whatever. From there, whoever's whoever's already uh, in in spec B and C, just balance it. You know, I'd say just balance it around them. Make the spec a little bit more accessible. Uh, you know, don't make it as difficult, um, but up the numbers so that it's within ninety percent of A. So that way, one, the class overall isn't being isn't affecting all the other classes in the game. But between but 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 between the between the three specs. Uh, things are rebalanced so that you know decent DPS is accessible for all the other specs, but the high but but the high skill spec, you know, pretending that fire mage is is, is like the hardest spec to use out of the three, will still will, will net you the, the, the highest amount of damage, and and I think that helps when it comes to avoiding having these these different skill levels of players or these different players of different of differing skill levels keep shifting around. Because that's what continues the whole cat and mouse game of balance and having to tweak things and, and fudge with things and, and, and that'll help avoid uh, players going around, oh, they keep fucking around with my class, just leave it alone, just leave it alone. Um, I mean, that's the way I see it. And when the time, and, and, and for like, if they do want to make a big shift, like a big change, just save it for an expansion. Like when an expansion starts, if fire happens to be the, the, the hot shit and arcane and frost, or not, you know, just balance around that for the expansion, and then save, and then save like a really big, uh, a really big change for the next expansion. Because at least then, it's not going to feel like as big of an impact. At least then, you have players being like, "Oh well, fuck this! I got to change from fire to, to arcane." But at least it's in, it's at the beginning of the expansion, right? Instead of like yeah, mid tier. And, and then not like you know when you put, you know got your artifact weapon to 54 you're sitting there like oh well that's a lovely change they did yeah yeah whether it's artifacts or whether it's just gearing up you're gonna have to like you know no one wants to like have to change uh change in change in classes or, or whatever that's one thing but change in specs uh mid tier or, or you know mid expansion that i'm sure that sucks i don't do it but I'm sure that you know someone changing from fire to frost and frost to arcane and, and back and forth again. That's not a that's not a good feeling. You know, I I, I get that people want to chase like what's the, the current hotness, but I don't know. I'm not I'm I'm not too fond of of having to chase it like that often. And I think maybe that's just a, a fundamental problem of these pure dps classes in general like maybe it's time to cut some of their specs like i know that sounds bad but you know like that's we're talking literally three classes in this game of uh god what is there 12 now 10 10 classes no 12, Something 12 like that. yeah 12 classes now and there's three three classes that had this issue like and i don't think and I think Drew is the only one with two DPS class uh, specs. And even no, then, that's, that's not like. True. Um, uh, fuck. Uh, Warriors. Rogues have two DPS specs. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Burn. Uh, okay, Warriors. Okay, so there, yeah, there's four. I keep forgetting Rogues. Oh, yeah, Warriors, too. Oh, yeah, I totally. Dude, we totally forgot about Rogues in this whole conversation. <laughs> Sorry, Rogues. But, rogues. Sorry. We 
don't have a rogue anymore. I don't, you know, they're demon hunters. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, that's <laughs> true. That's true, man. But, um, like, I think it's just a fundamental problem with the three DPS classes. And the reason I stuck to mages is they've been consistent the, since the dawn of the game. Like, literally, Fire, Frost, Arcane. You can't go wrong. You can't change them too much like they've done to Warlock, like they've done to Rogue recently, and same with Hunter. That's why I pick Mages, because it's just a, you, it's a, the most vanilla, vanilla fantasy class they have, and they can't really screw up the method to that. True. I guess, I guess Mages overall had the least... Uh, or had the, had the smallest overhaul out of all the pure classes because like warlocks got all fucked over and remember oh, warlock please. tanks. But yeah, but 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 they just had a big shift. I mean, hunters yeah. got a hunters had a had a big shift. Um, rogues, yeah, to, I think rogues, rogues, rogues is the best design spec in this game. What's that? I think demonology is the best design spec in the game. Like right now. Yeah. Everything you do in demonology like builds towards something. There's no filler. Everything you do is important, what and it life scales tab? amazingly with gear. Well, life tab is just a rogue or a warlock mechanic. It's something we've always done. So I don't. Yeah, like like. Yeah, right. I mean, I I kind of have some gripes about about life tab in that you know it's it's just it's just a resource building it's just a resource building skill that otherwise does absolutely nothing else except hurt you. Uh, a little bit, so so allows I mean, you to keep casting. Right, right, right. But when you think about other, um, uh, when you think about other specs like hunters or whatnot, you know, there's certain resource management that involves uh, that involves a certain rotation. Same thing with warlocks, but this also includes just pressing a button that does nothing, that does almost nothing, but get your life back and help you rebalance. Uh, that rotation like, like for demonology it works out because if you have to move then you you know you can't really do anything else while moving so you, you get a chance to life tap so right like right. affliction affliction on the other hand you still have to life tap and it literally is just a pain in the ass oh is that for like the empowered life tap thing no that's just you you, you, got, you run out of mana you have to life tap oh right 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 so just out of curiosity do you may just have evocate no nope. yes evocate? Oh, yeah, okay. uh, so arcane, no, it's right? a very arcane. similar. Yeah, just arcane. Yeah, it's a very similar mechanic, except it's for all of them. Well, it's part of arcane's rotation. Yeah, which is makes sense. Well, with the other one, it's not like I feel like it's not part of the rotation and just kind of dirties the class. I don't know how to describe it because I hated for the longest time. I forgot what it was about a certain spec that I tried. But when you're doing something that's not spending part of this rotation of I do something, I get a benefit. And I think it had to do with a lot with the tanks and how I felt about their active mitigation. I have hated Warrior and Druid tanking because you're doing this additional ability that's not really active, quote unquote. Because it's an ability you press for a passive bonus that doesn't really flow into the rotation like it has with Brewmasters, Paladins, and DKs. Like, it's not part of this rotation of, I smash a button, it something happens, that's part of this flow of the fight. Because I'm, I can hold this button and it's off the uh, GCD, and I just sit there and hit it whenever I need to. But you don't remember what it is? No, it's uh, fucking shield block and uh, whatever the stupid druid Savage Defense, no. Is it Savage Defense now? Well, but isn't that just a normal active mitigation ability just like, just like Pally's? Well, no, it's a, yeah. it's like, it's an, another, because like Shield of the Righteous is off the external cooldown, but it's part of the smashing ability. And it's why I liked Holy Power for it, because you feel this flow of building resources, using them, building resources, using them. Oh, is it because I'm actually like hitting shit as opposed to kind just of? doing Kind of, yeah, kind of like, oh, okay. like it's the, it's the whole flow i build resources use them but it's also an ability that does damage and isn't just a cooldown to hit 
Right, right. Well, yeah. I mean, I think back to like BC when I needed to pop BC and and Wrath of the Lich King when I had to pop Holy Shield every X number of seconds. Otherwise, I'd get uh, I'd get smashed in the face by by whatever it was, and I needed to uh, you know make sure I hit that hit that button right off a of cooldown. And it, and yeah, it, it had like a passive effect to it, like it did damage whenever I blocked. What to do? But it was very you know it, it's it's kind of similar to what you were talking about you know i press a button and i live it's not so much i press a button i smash this fucker's face and i and i live so i i, I kind of get what you're saying from a from a feeling yeah. standpoint. like and it's kind of like that. a and that's why again i avoided i don't touch mages or warlocks because of this or arcane and warlock because of this weird rotation kind of deal it's why I, I liked warriors for a long time but i don't or um prop warrior because of that weird flow of gameplay sure i remember doing that kind of shit with like seal of the righteous and, and all that every 20 something seconds i'd have to keep recasting it just so i can keep hitting keep hitting stuff that that was a big pain in the butt too well i, I remember at least had two of them what was it? Holy Shield during Cataclysm? Because that's when I started for Pro Paladin. And it was literally just an increase in block chains. And I only had it macroed in the, my taunt. Because literally that's the only time I really needed. And it was like all the taunt mechanics in Cataclysm were on 30 seconds. Sure, I remember when seal dancing was a thing. We had to like keep fucking shuffling seals you know, during our attack so we can maintain certain buffs. And ah, yeah, that was. That, that shit's fun too. But yeah, like that's back to, you know, the multi specs because we got a little sidetracked. It's all good. I just feel, yeah, like I mean, it's an important thing to talk about because I mean, this is why we play our classes. We like how they feel for the most part, you know, because we're not mythic raiders. I don't plan to be. I gave up that dream a long time ago. But it's like the reason I like this skill is we pick what we play, and it's like you know what, bring it, whatever, we don't care. I can feel uh, Julie, I, like multi -specs. I, I can feel Julie shaking his fist right now. He's like fucking shit. I, I like multi specs, but I think it it's not like WoW when it came out was stuck to this thing where every class has to have three specs, and it, to me it seems kind of silly. I mean, obviously we've gotten away from that now with Demon Hunters having two and Druids having four, but you have classes like Hunters and Rogues who have three different DPS specs, and it's just kind of unnecessary. And they've also lost their identity to these specs, too. Like, you know, Beastmaster well, no, and Marksman are kind of... Like, well, no, I mean, you know, there's no identity. They're way different. Like, I mean, you have, like, Rogue, where you have, like, Subtlety, which is all, like, I'm going to sneak around and do this, this, this. And, I mean, the Subtlety's probably a bad example, but you have Assassination. Assassination as well? You have Assassination, like, assassination which is No, yeah, yeah Assassination's also, all about dude, poisons one at a time, bleeds. guys. One at a time. Then, <laughs> yeah, sorry. Assassination's all about poison and bleeds, and then you have the new combat or outlaw, which is all about you know shooting a pistol and trying to roll and the fucking roll the bones, bones and hope you get something good. <laughs> Let me roll the bones forty-seven times until I get something good. Oh, and I can do DPS. <laughs> but like, isn't like assassination is about sneaking in the shadows and no, it's killing. all poison. Well, no, I'm saying the thematic of the class. Not when we're talking class fantasies here. Yes, but I mean, like, because I mean, when you look at subtlety and you look at assassination, you go, wouldn't you want to assassinate someone from the shadows and be sneaky about it? You know what I'm like? I, that's what I'm feeling is like the problem is, is a lot of these classes, when they neutered a whole bunch of the, uh, when they did the, God, words. The pruning, sir. Yeah, the ability pruning. Thank you. You know, it kind of neutered what these class identities were. Because, you know, you look at the classes with two DPS specs, and it actually came to mind. Shamans is another one. They're very unique when they have two DPS classes. You know, you have druids. One's a kitty cat, and one's an owl. Shamans, one hits things in the face, one throws lava at their face. You know, there's, I think there's maybe we need to start looking at dropping a spec. Ooh. That's, some, that's some dangerous talk, sir. Well, yeah, I mean, I mean, they they did they did that with 
um, with Survival Hunters. You know, they, they did that because that and, and that was kind of a nod to um, old old ass gameplay before they uh, before they took away the ability to use uh, melee weapons on a hunter. You know, people were rolling survival, and even though it was suboptimal or bad or whatever you want to call it, people were like, "Oh fuck it, I'm gonna mongoose bite the shit out of this guy," uh, you know, in his face. And then when he gets out, and then when he gets further out of range, I'm gonna throw on my bow uh, or, or gun or whatever, and then then I'm gonna shoot him in the face instead. You know, okay, that's cool. But I don't know, like uh, at least between mages, I can't. I can't really imagine taking away uh, a spec from from pure DPS classes. At least not at this point. Not not twelve years later. I well, for me, I think mages are like a unique. There's something unique about mages when it comes to three different specs, because it's literally the most again the most basic of fantasy characters: frost, fire, arcane. Like that's so basic, so universal in Dungeons and Dragons to now like it's just a universal concept that is can't be changed it's one of those things that just cannot be changed so what about like arms and fury I think those are both fundamentally different enough because it, 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 it same goes for DK in that respect where they're fundamentally different enough and their core ideas like maybe change Fury a little bit more to be the finesse two-handed weapon user while Fury is the I smash your face I'm visceral I'm going crazy to the point where I'm almost killing myself in fights you know kind of deal and you know Frost is the Frost versus Unholy you got this pet disease spread corruption idea and then the frigid unyielding death of Frost, you know the cold. So descriptive, sir. Hey, it's, but, but <laughs> I, I like the fantasy part. No, of no, it. Like, I, uh, no, I, I see your point with with regard. Well, for for warriors, I'm not assault enough, mostly because I I haven't messed around with arms and fury in like forever. Death knights, death knights are they define their specs uh, much better between between two and frost and uh, you know and. Or, or dual frost and like a two-handed weapon for unholy, and of course, and of course, the fantasy behind them. You know, it's cold shit versus a pet. You know, something that's more, that's a bit more pet uh, centric. So, like, like those that I can see, but I don't know. I'm thinking about like, like, what would we do with uh, with some of these classes if we're going to outright remove a spec? Because of course, there there's a lot of fans of like X Y Z spec, and they would hate to. Uh, you know, they would hate to see it go. Like, um, I don't know what is, like, the least popular spec between rogues at the moment, but, I mean, because of that, should it be, should it be out, should it be outright removed for the sake of balance? Well, I think it's a balance in, like, identity crisis that specs are having, so it kind of rolls together. Because, I mean, people who like assassination or subtlety, well, they're, it, the problem is they're sharing too much. You know, they both wield daggers. They're both, you know, this supposed to be the stealthier part of the class. Compared Subtly's to the odd man out at this point. Like, Isn't subtlety okay. just has no place. Uh, exactly. Assassinate, like, you know, you put your poisons and your bleeds and you have all this power in that. And then subtlety is just like, I'm a spec too, guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, you know, and that's the same for, I think, Warlocks is also in a weird spot. I don't know what uh, I would do I disagree. There. Warlock right now has so much class identity, it's nuts. Yeah. I, I, I it's, agree with that. I, it, it's kind of the same position as mages are, where it's, you know, Frostfire Arcane. We know, you know, we, for the most part, know what those are, regardless of the difficulties of, of balancing them. They are their own... They're their own thing. They have they have a pretty solid identity. Same thing with uh, b between demo destro and and affliction. They all have, you know, very defining things to them. It's like what's chaos bolts? We know what chaos bolt is. Same thing, uh, same thing with like all the curses and 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 corruption and and what have you. And now all the demon shit. So I th so I think I think those those are okay. But yeah, like like rogues seem to be in a more difficult. Uh, you know, it seems to be in a more difficult situation. Hunters seem to be in a better spot now that survival is is more of a melee spec. But uh, I mean, I mean, 
th that only leaves like one class or one spec to to remove and yeah you know, that still makes for a big balancing issue yeah like and i still think hunters like when they did the melee switch they gave it a bit more of that uniqueness that it was missing because i mean survival felt like marksman except worse i guess is the well, it was During like it was basically a nod to the old school because back in the day you could equip your, your weapon, like your main hand weapon, was a stat stick, and you you also equipped your bow, so you could have both equipped. And back in the day, one of their best hunter's best weapon happened to be a spear, yeah, or a pole arm. And I'm just saying, like that's kind of what saved that. But what would you do for rogues? And I don't think going ranged on rogues seems right. I don't and think, I think they the need other... three specs. Yeah, exactly. They just need two. They're rogues. That's one is the, you know, the outlaw, you know, wild, wild west pirate, whatever you want to call them, and then one is the the assassin, assassin in the shadows. You know, I don't so. think hunters need three specs. You know, beast mastery. I think beast mastery and marksman could be combined. And I, and I get the idea that you know one is a master of pets, one is a master of you know shooting the bow, but I think. You know, some tuning can be done, and those can be made into one thing. And then you could have your melee hunter, or you could get rid of the melee hunter because that's weird to me anyway. Maybe I think, like I, it's something to play with for hunter, but I definitely rogue can get down to two. Um, and same with what are we forgetting? I think that's it. Yeah, right. Too many so rogue classes. Like I think mage one. can say the same. I mean, like. Well, I think the biggest... I feel like maybe Arcane can go for Mage. Like, I'm just... I know that sounds weird, but it's... They've always had a problem with the gameplay of Arcane. Arcane um, is the the pew, pew, pew spec. I stand there, and I just shoot. I get that, but it's also just one of those... Specs no. that they've always had a hard time with the rotation on, I think. Mage is just way too yeah. iconic to just change, though. Like, you can't just get rid of the... You know. Yeah, they, they've they changed the mage too little to to for us, for this to be an argument, at least between the three of us. I'm sure that I'm sure that there are other folks that are like super diehard and whatever mindset that they've, that they've got, they'll be like, no, 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 fuck mages, this is what we can, you know, this is why we should, you know, there shouldn't be three mage specs, it should be, you know, Instead of fire and frost, just call it a frost well, fire mage or something like that. Well, the biggest, like, when I think arcane, though, like, when was someone excited to play arcane? I like um, arcane. I know okay. Zero was arcane for a while. Again, because he, had, because he felt like he had to be. Yeah, like, no one likes. I've never liked arcane. I liked it because it was a joke in Cataclysm. I thought like, it was fascinating because it hit, I I was I was always fascinated by arcane missiles. I thought I thought arcane missiles was cool, but okay, yeah. I, I like frost. I like the way they changed that. You don't like the way they changed it. No, I like it though. The way okay. it's proc based now instead of like just a thing on your rotation. And arcane missile is one of those again D and D classic abilities. That you probably couldn't fit into either one or the other two. Yeah, like I'm not a fan of, of Arcane except for Arcane Missiles. I know what that is. I know what Arcane Explosion is. Yeah, so I don't know. It Arcane just always felt awk, awkward of the two. I just don't know how to describe how I feel about it. I wouldn't be sad to see it go. That's my opinion. I think, though, like having so many different specs makes balance really difficult because now you're you're having to you're gotta you gotta keep the class flavor and everybody in this day and age is going to look at numbers so if one performs better than the other then everyone's going to play that one well now you've got to change this one but you can't lose the class flavor you gotta you gotta keep that or the spec flavor so it makes it really difficult yeah that's why i wanted to that's why I I'm, I'm I'm still stuck on the mindset of, you know, if if this is how it is, let's not let's not fuck with let's not fuck with the players. Let's tweak the numbers, make it so that uh, make it so that the specs are within e are within each other. Whoever's first place can stay first place. Just buff the other two, um, and 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 leave that be. If there's a, you know, and then if they want to do like big shifts that threaten. Um, Whichever class, you know, which spec is going to be first place, save that for an expansion. Otherwise, just preserve things, you know, kind of the way that they are. 
I mean, yeah, that's I, that's that's a couple of years of one spec being uh, of one spec being dominant. But I don't. Know, I, I think it's better from a kind of customer service and uh, standpoint to just not fuck with the players so much. I and I think that's a stance they started taking, like at the end of MOP or something, right before uh, Ghost Caller left. You know, this is like you know, big changes are only gonna like the only time we're gonna do big changes is if something is really really out of whack you know we've talked a lot about dps but i think we're ignoring like healers and tanks because there's a huge disparity between tanks and healers now too but most classes don't have two like the only class that comes to mind that has two is priest or are you just talking about like straight performance Julie? straight performance yeah like yeah for well, me for me like i i don't have a great perspective on it because i mean apart from me just playing apart from me only playing a fucking pally tank and i think they're the greatest in the universe the for for me at least i don't see a great way to measure um tanks because it's like what are we measuring tank dps yeah okay we you know we can talk about tank dps and we can we can math we can math some of that out but i don't think it would be as as effective because tank performance is is and, and healer performance too is so dependent on like everyone else like we'd only be able to measure like certain things like what's the maximum throughput that a healer can put out okay well you know it depending on the conditions and, and whatnot it, it could be like this like for a disc priest like their best conditions is when everyone's going to take big damage and a disc priest will save all their mana for like whenever the big damage is going to go out they apply you know certain amounts of mend or atonement or whatever the fuck that's called you know apply that buff to every, to as many people as they can burst everything kill like more than half their mana but they end up doing like triple the healing that that all the other healers did previous you know previous to that so i mean like, at least for me it's it's hard to measure but what do you think jerry well, I mean, obviously, you know, some tanks like, say, Druids have way more cooldowns, survivability cooldowns than other tanks. It makes them a lot more useful. They scale better with items. Like, like if you have two tanks and one needs way less gear to be able to be as survivable as another, it kind of creates a balance problem. Same goes for healers. You know, for a long time, disc, once you had gear, was just, it was just powerful. Like, it, it was the way the heals worked was just way stronger than every other healer. That's true. I mean, well, Disc was always in a weird spot because of their ability to steal shit from from everyone else. You know, it's like it's like, okay, why okay, why heal? Because it's gonna take it's gonna consume the disc bubble first. Now that's changed a lot. You know, disc has has an has a niche, but it's you know, for for like straight throughput, disc is not something I would immediately rely on. I think they're I think they're better. I don't think they're as bad as what some people say because AJ does a pretty decent job of what he does, um, whenever whenever he's healing. But it's but it's definitely changed. And I don't and I think between the heals, I think they're in a better spot than than what they were at before. As for tanks, though, I don't know. Like I'm, I'm still like like you said that druids had like hella cooldowns. I'd argue that pallies have hella cooldowns. In fact, you know the the running belief is that you know if pallies run out of cooldowns they're dead or you know something or, or something close to well, that my well, those, thing with those are the two best tanks to be fair. <laughs> well paladins are i think like whenever i'm on my paladin and i like am doing world quests and then i see all of a sudden my shield of righteous is stopping 50 percent of the damage i take whenever i stand in consecrate i'm like this is a, this is my shield wall on a 13 second cooldown with three charges you need more haste sir yeah, yeah. Hey, I don't. I world quest. I only go for the <laughs> smashing shit in the face. Don't. Thirteen it's not my seconds. Fault. It's like I have a whole bunch of versatility and stuff on my gear. For nah, it's okay. I think I think my shit's at thirteen seconds. You know, I, let me. Yeah. yeah, my thing's at like more than thirteen seconds. I'm bad. Yeah. Like I have. I'm pretty sure I think I have more hasting because I actually valued it for prod. <laughs> but but um. Shit. <laughs> but it's like, and then I I think healers right now. Like, we're talking about healers, but I think healers are probably in the best spot they've ever been since they nerfed Disc as much as they did. Um, you know, like, I remember watching, I forgot whose video it was. It was, I think it was one of Serenity's or Methods, like, top healers just talking about, like, what are the best healers? 
and it literally said they're all balanced to like you know we're talking percentage point like very small percentage points like single digit percentages in like optimum and like some are better in five man some are better in groups stuff like that and you know and if you want damage you get a disc grease because they do damage and healing because i remember seeing the heroic solo of three people soloing the first boss of emerald nightmare you know it was a three-man hunter uh when marksman was broken uh i think it was a dk tank and a disc grease Damn. three-man heroic uh what's stupid dragon with the bugs um nothing so I, yeah but it's just like you know i think and then paladins I think paladins are in a weird spot for in terms of healing because they bring so much utility in what they can do because they have, you know, bop if they don't have a pally tank. You know, they have hand of sack, uh, which is a pretty sizable external. Oh, when you land hands me without without telling me? I don't know what you're talking about. Punk ass Someone thought you were about to die. <laughs> I have shit ready, well, man. Hey, I have forbearance now. <laughs> yeah, I'm, 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 yeah, they're, they're, yeah, whatever. <laughs> uh, let's let's move on from that. Keep going. <laughs> but you know, like that kind of deal. And I also think paladins have some crazy throughput when they wing because they have this really silly lineup of cooldowns if they line it up real well. I mean, I mean, I'm not tripping about the throughput. The damage is nice. It helps. It helps the deeps. That's always. Uh, that's always good. For the most part, I just, for the most part, even though I try to do the damage and all that, like I just I try to care more about. Uh, you know, I just try to care more about surviving, and you know we do have plenty of stuff uh, available. Just just like the other classes do, you know, they all have their they all have their advantage. Like I still I'm, I still strongly believe that. Ignore pain is like fucking crazy as shit. Um, you know, brewmasters can shrug off just about anything as long as uh, as long as a healer is on top is on top of them and, and and is aware of the damage that that they have incoming. I think uh, I, I don't hear enough, but it feels like blood's the weakest, right? It's mostly from my feeling. Blood is also the one that has the highest skill cap of tanks. In terms of when to death strike at the right time, and I also I imagine it's I will not dying. play blood anymore because I do not like what the change they did to it with like their runic power, like death strike being on runic power. I just don't. It feels just bad. I don't know how to describe it because like when you were on runes, it felt better, and then it feels like death strike is too expensive compared to the other classes. I know Cost. exactly what you're talking about. Like, you don't... Like, have you tried it, Julie, in a while? I have never or? played a... That was a sarcasm. <laughs> I've never played oh. I know literally nothing about that class. Well, like, so they changed it, so Death Strike is now, like, 45 runic power. Haven't played it since the change, except, like, during when we tried to do, like, heroic or normal mode alt runs in Hellfire Citadel. And I was told I sucked because... AJ was way better, and I just sat there in the sidelines while he tanked. Sounds like it's um, because you suck. I, it's also because I probably can't get my head around DK tanking anymore. Because it just... It feels like getting the runic power required to stay alive is such a problem. Or was such a problem. Um, that it just... I don't know. just didn't feel right. And not to mention, like, a lot of... Cla- like, a lot of tanks have percentage damage reduction while they don't really they're based on healing and then sometimes blizzard throws a wrench in the system by reducing the amount of healing a tank can do or receive which bends death knights over backwards and you know calls them dirty names in their ear so it's just i don't know I just I do agree DK is probably one of the more awkward of the tanks, but as a whole, the rest of them feel good in a solid spot. 
You know, I'm not um, quite sure why. Um, oh, well, okay, I can see why, but I think it'd be debatable as to whether or not Demon Hunters should have had no tank spec. Like, I think personally, I think I think they should have have just had a tank spec and a kind of a caster ish. I feel like they are the worst tank. Like, if you have to pick between tanks, they're kind of the least desirable. But why is that? Because their, me- their mechanic is more about like healing. They don't. It's not really a lot of mitigation. Yeah, like that's one same problem I have with DKs is this healing mechanic. I mean, I, like from from what little experience that I have with Demon Hunters, it felt like it felt like a combination of of Death Knights and Druids, where they had you know they had a button to pop to help keep them alive. It's, it's something that Tag doesn't like. Uh, and on top of that, they had a skill to use to suck up all them little soul bubble thingamajigs to get their life back, sort of similar to... Oh man, druids have like 500 buttons to keep them alive now. <laughs> <laughs> I, want more, I wouldn't mind more buttons to keep me alive. I wouldn't mind freaking mastery giving me more life either. Uh, yeah, that, that, and, and, and that's one thing that, that, that I at least gripe on for pally tanks at least. I would have liked to have had like a bigger health pool, but I can see why, because our self-heal is... Just stupid. Like, well, and, and if we had, I a, think your damage reduction is insane. Like, literally having a shield wall on a button is. Yeah, like, like with our artifact uh, at a certain level, once we're at like thirty percent, something like that, if we start popping mitigation. Like, we'll just ride the line. It'll scare the shit out of the healers for sure, but we can just ride the line until we can use our hand of the protector, and then boom, we might get up to like seventy, eighty percent health, just like that. And again, scare the shit out of the healers or. Or possibly waste their mana because, or you die, or I die. Yeah, yeah. But it, it, it's a weird. It, it's kind of a weird line that pallies uh, that pallies sit on. But as long as the healers are, I mean, and, and and I guess that's the thing. I think I think if healers are a bit more experienced with healing the different kinds of tanks, then they then they'll realize that okay, this, there's a different way that I need to adapt to healing this tank because the tank can do this thing, that thing. And that's why I think healing is healing is such a difficult role because, you know, on top of having to keep an eye on fight mechanics, they're gonna have to uh, keep an eye on the tanks and, and and make sure that people ain't standing and shit so they can bitch them out later. Um, but on top of that, like I was saying, you know, they need to adapt to uh, who who it is that they're tanking because they because that tank will stay alive in a different way, and if the healer doesn't realize it. It, you know, the tank's going to die, and it's not entirely going to be the tank's fault. Partially the tank's fault. Always the tank's fault. Whatever, dude. Because <laughs> <laughs> they get cool think, ability they didn't read about. I think another interesting uh, aspect of this is this whole balancing thing is how something scales with gear. Like, back to Warlocks, for example... Demonology scales ridiculously with gear and buffs because being able to summon more wild imps is just ridiculous. So during during Bloodlust, like you'll see most demonology warlocks, if they're playing right, should be on top of the meters. Like nobody should be able to touch them. No, that's and it, about that right. keeps that keeps their DPS higher than the other the other specs. Even though the other specs have been given tools and buffs like affliction. They still can't keep up with demonology one, because even with the same amount of gear, demonology scales better. So, like, it's like in the case of warlocks, without without me really keeping track of like what spec is better uh, is better than the other. Like, um, I I guess I'll just assume that 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 demo's the best. Let's let's pretend that demo's the best and all the it other. Is. And, Okay, cool. Okay, that was the best. All the other specs or whatever. So how so how do you balance? Uh, how would you balance them? Uh, you know those three specs to get them closer in line to each other. Well, I think it's it's okay if one spec is better at a certain thing than another. Like if Affliction was the five man spec, and then you know Demonology is the single target spec, and then Destruction's the maybe the three target cleave spec or the cleave spec. In general, yes, I I don't consider you know the five man spec and the cleave spec to be the same thing. But isn't that like 
what they wanted talents to be. Uh, the talents don't really accomplish that though, because really demonology is the best in every situation. Like they, they're the best in the five man. They're best at single target. They're best at cleave, and their rotation doesn't really change that much. So, so, in, so in the case of that, in, in the case with demo, where demo is the clear, uh, you know, does have the clear advantage in every kind of situation. What do you do about the others? Yeah, I think you have to figure out, you know. It's like the others have the tools. The others do good damage, so they're they're usable and they're acceptable. You're not gonna play affliction as long as you've got some gear. You're not gonna play affliction now and feel like, you know, terrible because you're gonna be doing DPS as long as you're doing your rotation right. Same with destruction. I think it's got to figure out how you know the uh, how the abilities scale with gear and then tune numbers off of that. I think I agree. Like, not just gear, but buffs as well. Yeah, like, yeah. The trinket buffs and buffs from the the raid yeah i agree i mean as long as like in this case with demo as long as demo is in is within like the acceptable is within the acceptable range uh between all classes and, and all the other specs and then things like affliction and uh things like affliction and destro where i would say are within 10 percent of uh of demo as long as it's as, as long as it's a little bit easier for 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 those uh, for those specs to get within that ten percent, then I think I'd be then I think that would I think that would work because, again, like for me, it's the whole psycholo it's the whole psychology of, of, uh, players feeling forced to switch specs so they can get to like the very best shit. If they want to switch, so they can so they if they want to switch to demo. So they can get, so they can possibly get to that uh, hundred percent percentile. Okay, cool. But if it's harder to do than it is to get within ninety percent, if you're affliction or destro, then I think that's I think that's a good thing. I think that's a, I think that's a good separation between uh, between levels of skill between players. That's me. Yeah, I agree. And I also think another way to buff classes and stuff is. You know, we haven't talked about, like, set bonuses. You know, that's an easy way to balance specs in, you know, some way uh, without having to buff. Exactly. I don't really like the numbers. idea of having a very specific thing. Like, you must have this legendary or this yeah. set to, like, be viable or, or you know, to, to get that 100%. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. It, it it it's tough because set bonuses are cool. They're supposed to, uh, you know, have a cool effect or do something that's significant. And I don't like it relying on that. It's kind of that's kind of like the problem with legendary. Some people rely on that. Well, I think the problem with legendaries is it's a flat. Literally, these are the best ones. When you look at set bonuses. Maybe it adds some unique mechanic. Like I kind of like the idea for prop paladins. Okay, my my or sorry, holy paladins. My two set boring. Whatever, five percent extra crit on my holy shock. Whoop de do. But when my holy shock's crit, I get something called infusion of light, which increases the cast speed of holy light or increases my flash heals. But I get one additional charge when I have my four set. Something small, unique that maybe makes the class better, in some instances or not. Yeah, for for heal for healing in tanks, that's uh, I, I I think that's more acceptable than than DPS. DPS, you know, people are measuring again. They're they're measuring dicks all the time. They're gonna do everything they can to get uh, to get an advantage uh, over the other. People will be competing with each other. So so you know, going for um, this is where this is where loot drama comes from. You know, people are like, oh, but then this will get me my this will get me my four set. That's going to get me like, uh, you know, twenty percent more DPS, whatever uh, it is. And yeah, I mean, I mean, it'd be nice if uh, if sets weren't as prominent as they sometimes are. Like like Drew was saying, like making them uh, making them like nice bonuses, cool. But making them viable, not you know, needing them to be viable, not as cool. So I think like in situations like those, it, it's hard. It, it would be hard to really quickly balance because that's something that Blizzard would have to do uh, as, as a reaction. You know, once they get, 
you know, million, you know, hundreds of thousands of samples, unlike the thousands of samples that, that they would get internally, even with their sims and whatnot. Players are going to act differently. So, like, if there's a way that, if, if there's a way that Blizzard can make it so that, um, you know, not ha having a set gives them, you know, like a 10% increase or something like on, on, on their performance, but it's not like a 30% increase, uh, that's something that so that's something that they'll have to monitor like really closely. Yeah, I think just I think the biggest battle we have in general is just player perception. Because you know, Slusslon made an excellent point later in the tweet that you know, even though the numbers are, I think he did like a hundred eighty seventy or whatever. Eventually, the perception is going to skew the results to be. 170.50. Right, like like the numbers that that we typically see, like I'll see YouTube videos saying like, oh, here's the, here here are the parses, and and here's how here's how DPS looks for the week. It's fake as shit, dude. Or, or it's it's not fake. It's like skewed as fuck. Like uh, like the the people at the top, those are those are probably the best. Those are probably the best players. You're not seeing a spread of. Um, you know, you're not seeing a spread of skill between between each of these each of these specs and, and whatever. You're seeing the best people that are representing their class uh, on uh, on those meters. So, yeah, yeah, I don't know. Like, I, I think it's I think it's a big problem that that Blizzard has with trying to downplay those kinds of numbers because people will say, "Well, this is what the numbers say. Numbers don't lie." Yeah, numbers may not lie, but the context behind it is is false. These are not like all the top players uh, in the world that are that are posting meters onto these uh, uh, onto these boards. It's like it's everybody who posts meters, w w which by itself is still not representative of of everybody. I just can't think of too much more that we could do to ever balance classes. Like I seriously think just like going through and adding unique things during the expansion, making it more fun and interesting. And I think they did a lot of changes to help rectify that, like getting rid of reforging, getting rid of... Uh, don't piss people off with that one, man. People I know, are... I know, right? <laughs> hey, I don't have to get hit in expertise cap. I don't get goddamn anything. Uh, that's why I played a you know elemental shaman. It was easy as hell to do because um, of spirit gear, but it's got rid of that. They also got rid of gearing off specs. So if you were one of those odd classes where shaman druid, you have the agility DPS spec and the int DPS spec, you can switch between them, and it doesn't gearing wise. You're not too far behind. You know you need to worry about trinkets. Um, and weapons, but that's about it now. You know, that's you know that's what gets me about um, like all these conversations. Of, oh my god, I got to grind for all this stuff. You know, I need to uh, grind, 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 grind. And I'm like, you know, it wasn't that long ago when what was it, uh, Miss Pandaria? Yeah, Miss Pandaria, where you know we had to like get entire sets of gear if we if we're a hybrid spec. You know, you want you want to you want to heal and tank in deeps. You need to get you know, three sets of gear, or you know, you needed three sets of tier uh, gear as well. And that, you know, that was that was death. Oh, uh, let's not talk about that. That was, <laughs> I remember doing that on my shaman, and that was just for two. That could yeah go so, the way of freaking it has been. And yeah, be buried and forgotten. Yeah, so like the most extreme behavior that I'm that, that I see these days, and these are people talking in forums, so we don't know like what's actually true or not, or if it's just true amongst like the top top players, where you know they'll uh, they'll le they'll level a tune, they'll get like a certain number of legendaries, and if by the time they get like the third or fourth legendary, it's not what they want, they just re-roll and start the whole and start the whole process again. I don't know what's going on in their heads. It's like chances are pretty good that by the time you do like do that all over again and and get another 
however many legendaries, you probably you'd probably get another set of legendaries on that first tune that you're leveling instead of wasting your wasting so much time with with farming. I don't know. For, for, for me, I don't get it. It, it. it continues to be a thing that eludes me where people take gear as the goal uh, in the game. And I guess, and I guess I can understand it from like from like a collection standpoint, but I don't know. Like I, I look past that, and I look at the goal that I'm trying to meet. Uh, you know, w w which might be, w which which is usually like something related to like a boss or whatever. And then gear is just a thing that I get in order to uh, in order to kill that boss, in order to survive a little bit longer. But you know, people are like, no, nah, I gotta get like you know, nine twenty Titan Forge this and that like i remember throws before yeah throws big rug he was like farming some mythic dungeon like all the damn time because he just wanted to get like a titan forged I, I i forget what trinket it was but he was like oh he was dead set on getting that because that was like the best possible thing that he can get at the time even though i don't know what trinkets are out there that are good for like red um, uh, no wait was it was it throws or was it what's a hunter it was throws i thought one of the there's like a trinket from Black uh, Black Rock uh, Black Rook Hold, that is like best in slot for hunters. Yeah, I don't know, but it's like it's like you're you're using you're taking best in slot list and you're using you're you're, you're applying Titan Forge shit to that, and I don't know. That's like that 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 that's a that's a drain, man. <laughs> that's yeah. a, that's well, a soul, I mean, it's a soul sucker. Here's an example for me, like, because I, I mean, there was a time period where I kind of stopped playing for a little bit during this expansion. Oh, Every really? Week. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I've come back a little bit solid more now. This has I been mean, the most solid you've been, like, in two years, I think, because you've showed up what? what? You showed up what? Whoa, whoa. Two weeks in a row? Three weeks in a row? Oh, hey, hey. Let's tone that back. I oh. was very consistent during, you know, Hellfire Citadel into whatever was it after or not hellfire citadel but uh black rock into hellfire citadel that was like what six years ago come on dude Jesus. <laughs> okay fine but i mean like i mean i didn't play too much but you look at some of our i mean gearing just happens i've mostly played for the bosses i don't do mythic dungeons Mythic Plus, I've literally done some, or maybe like six, and I'm doing them now for the quests, because I guess I want Transmog, because I've always liked Transmog. But for me, it's like, you look at our parse for Heroic Trillax, our kill, I was second highest in numbers for healing. Like, gear... Wasn't that because most everyone was dead? Ha! <laughs> <laughs> but, that's beside Shad, the point. Shad was dead. Hell, hell of deeps for dead and a couple of heals. Fine, I can, fine, I can... fine. Let's see. Let's uh, let's look at a different fight just to make you, <laughs> Mister. Let's see. I remember what happens last week. Week before that, not so much, dude. Okay. God, even the Scorpion one we want to talk about where Shad was second on healing because that's that's so stupid. Ignore pain, it's a nerf. All I gotta say. See, <laughs> see. Yeah, he was. Well, okay. No, I'm just playing. There's all those ads, and he can cleave them and get too much rage. Yep. But I was third. I was third under him because Mary's busted. We need yeah. to nerf Mary. Well, everyone's but so like, close together, so Chain Heal's a yeah. boss. Well, it's Riptide. Riptide's a boss. Oh, was it? Was it? Okay. My man. It is Riptide. But it's like, you know, and then. We're talking about legendaries. Well, okay, there's some good legendaries, but I think my numbers, like ability wise, like my legendary neck for my healing is like 10% usually. Yeah, like it was 11% on that fight. You know, that's some survivability in healing that's not needed on me. So there's like bonuses to these legendaries that people are grinding out and it's like that's why just i don't i've never understood the point i've used to do it but now it's like in this day and age of wow you don't need to 
I don't know, people they, flip out and they feel compelled. It's like, I got to do this to be competitive. Otherwise, I lose my spots. Well, I, and Like, there's literally, there, we're talking the top, maybe, I don't know, like 1% of guilds need to do that. And I think that's where the issue lies is you're worrying about this 1%. And if that is their desire to do it, let them. Let them learn their lesson. You know, I think that's the biggest thing Blizzard needs to just, like, these are the people that are going to go. They don't generally complain about that. But if they're going to, well, let them. Let them burn themselves out. Because that's what happened to me. I tried to be a progression raider, and I burned out. I burned when out was this? This was before I joined POW. Like, this was during uh, Mogushan Vaults. Oh, that I tried to good. do... I had like I was like... 500 us i think on my like Elegon hill. <laughs> 500 wow what it was i know us but it was like whatever for uh normal Elegon because that was actually a wall back then for it, was, it was a wall for us I'll tell you that yeah. no actually it wasn't a wall it was a big hole that everyone just dropped <laughs> into oh my god but i you know and then i burned out because i was dealing with a relief Right leader that didn't want to, you know, listen, and he was costing us progression, and you know that burned me out. So I moved on, and then I joined this, you know, hole and this well, shit. hey, I'm staying. <laughs> but it's I think people just need to, you know, the people who are gonna do it are gonna do it. They're gonna do it because they want to, because they want to be the best. They know the cost. So I think. You know, I, you know, I don't think they. I don't think they. I don't think they know the cost because because they're bitching about or, it. Well, and if they're bitching about it, well, maybe they're going to learn the cost. I I hate taking that hard line, but you learn through trial and error. And if they're not going to learn, well, let them keep eating their head in because you can't you can't sacrifice your game for the one percent. I really want that helmet, though. That gives me the that gives me the second lot of the protector. Oh man, that should be. I just boss. want legendaries to be usable in PvP because <laughs> I want to use. Yeah, my people will, people will love that one. Oh, are you kidding me for paladins? Oh, I'm talking about for everyone else who's complaining about shit. Oh, I don't have any legendaries, yeah. man. But the increased percentage for uh, paladins on the blessings and then get to use that with hand of freedom and just zip around everywhere and not be oh my god just like never be touched as a holy paladin i'd just be all over the place It'd be nice be glorious i'll be so blessed but you know like there's i think it's just a thing that you know people need to learn and if they're not going to learn well just let them keep not learning it's how i feel you know society is for the most part I mean, it'd be nice if people were just focused on being good without having, without feeling so reliant on the legendaries. I mean, the issue with the, the issue with I, I I know I know I'm just wishful thinking, right? It'd be nice if uh, the prevalence was uh, was toned down. You know, some of the classes that feel like or actually are reliant on them to be viable or whatever people call viable these days. Um, it'd be cool if that was toned down. I mean, it'd be cool if if Ian's um, original thought, you know, came true, where where he was like, "Well, it'd be." I, I think it would have been better if we only had utility legendaries and they did nothing for uh, throughput and 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 DPS. Like if if they only had like the tanking neck and um, you know that that ring whatever that that no one likes if they only had shit like that then legendaries would be in a better spot because people wouldn't be fucking griping about them uh so goddamn much but i don't know people just people want the shiniest thing and people see that and it's like a big beacon you know that says best in slot you know you gotta have uh this is the thing you what gotta you have you know what i said damn it hey it's a 940 <laughs> it's best in slot yeah i I think that's probably the biggest issue with them but best in what like i've liked so <laughs> i've liked guild wars to take on legendaries like i don't know if you guys have but they are no nah, i, I only the, play i only play good games okay. but i mean when 
they make a legendary, it is a legendary. Like, I mean, Thunder Fury was a big deal. Like, in, maybe one guild on the server had it. It's pretty close to the same thing in Guild Wars 2, but guess what? You can craft it. And if you have enough money to throw at it, you can throw it at it. See, the thing but is, I like, mean, like, I see, like, making that comparison, to me, to me, is just semantics. It's just called legendary. I don't give a fuck. If, when it comes to, like, these items that we're getting here in Legion, they're just super nice, rare things that drop from many, many different sources and has an unlimited uh, drop source rate thing. But if, if if they didn't call it legendary, we would still have, like, I don't know. Well, I don't know. Maybe we would have a different argument if they were just purples and they just happen to have all these effects on them. But in, in my opinion, they're, you know, despite using the the naming convention, I don't see legendaries in Legion. To me, to me, that's that's not a thing because my my idea of legendary is kind of is kind of similar to what you were talking about with Thunder Fury or that thing you're talking about in Guild Wars. It's super rare, hard to make, takes heck of time, or or requires a raid group to assist you with with doing it. That's not, that hasn't happened since Cataclysm, right? No, oh, I think literally we are talking Thunder Fury. And no, no, no. Cataclysm. No, they had I, the they had the staff. No, because and you could the, funnel it into someone. That's not the same. At like, wasn't that the same thing with Thunder well, Fury? Though? With Thunder Fury, like, it was such a rare drop. Like, you could see one binding, and see another of the exact same binding drop before you saw the next one. Yeah, but you're but like, I mean, same difference. You're still going to funnel it to like that same person, we were right? Guaranteed, eventually, to happen. There was no if ands, or buts. It was a guarantee. Eventually, at the end of this thing, you were going to have it. Mm -mm. Well, no, well, I, I'd no, say no. I say With cataclysm, the staff and cataclysm, the and mm -mm, because yeah. because oh. I might not want to give it to you. I might I might funnel it to someone else. And guess what? They could just keep grinding that. There was going to be a point eventually where it was going to be you needed to, like, because I mean. Again, I bring up the arcane mages for, you know, Heroic Spine. They literally all had the staff, and they were funneled all in the... They ran Firelands to get the stupid staff so they could progress. I mean, um, I mean, for that, it's just a difference of... It's a difference of being able to get it faster. And it, That's all. Literally, they kept going back on this. They keep... Everyone wants the legendary, right? And I think that's a good mentality to have. And then the problem is, is when you get, start giving everyone their legendary. Because now all of a sudden we have, God, how many legendaries per class? I don't know. And that's, I think, 10 I right think that's a problem when they did with legendaries. Yeah. 10 per class or whatever, times 12, 120 legendaries. That's back, you know, we were guaranteed a legendary. I think it's only a, a problem when it's ring. mandatory, though. Yeah. Like, like the availability is like one thing, but the feeling well, of, of, of it being, of, of the feeling of it being needed in order to become quote unquote viable on top of the the open source you know the the, the ability for it to drop like from any source uh, at a low chance it creates it, it creates this this sort of toxicity you know i remember like when when ian and whatever was saying at blizzcon it's like well like we want to bring back that awesome feeling of getting of getting something like really cool it's like okay that's great but what about every moment before that where you hope it's going to drop and then it doesn't that doesn't feel good you know and, well, and i i think that when you finally do get the thing and it happens to be what you actually want it's more like a feeling of relief than a, than than a triumph how's this for a thought like it's kind of weird because i truly think this requirement has come from the availability if you all of a sudden go back to this mentality of it is, you see someone with Thunder Fury and they are the one person on your realm with Thunder Fury, right? Well, or, you know, that's walking around in Dalaran being the head honcho that he has the biggest dick walking around. But it doesn't apply to Mythic. The, all of a sudden, his bonuses for that legendary are gone. Because Mythic is where those legendaries become required for pro pushing progression. It's, it's easier. But I no, wouldn't it's, say. It's, it but, but I wouldn't like say. I, well, I, I'd say like for the purpose of just straight up completing content, 
legendaries are not outright required but they yeah, but, but, but but they I help mean, so but they help so much that socially when it comes to group building and uh you know you know getting a group together of course it's going to be mandatory for for like the really to be like okay you got to you know we we need to have this much of dps you only do this much of dps because you happen to not have a legendary if he happens had if he happens to have a shitload of gear and no legendary it, you know then it wouldn't make then it wouldn't make a difference because he still he or she is still is still putting out the numbers uh, that you need but the whole thing about it being required or whatnot it's not it's not like the game is telling you no you cannot enter this instance because you only have one piece of legendary gear you must have two it's it's people that are doing it well and I, that's what i'm saying is like the literally the people that are caring about it are mythic to some extent like if you're caring about our heroic you're like i mean if we're prog- we're that weird like in between group where we're hardcore about progression progression but we're not we don't care about world first or world but we raid like US almost 500. six hours a week dude oh, what do you freaking do? i work 40 hours and then i sleep a lot i don't care i work seven six hours, hours. Ooh, and how's never mind um i got but, paid like two bucks yesterday <laughs> Holla. but i'm just saying like when you make the guilds that care about in my opinion the people that care about legendaries and aren't pushing the one percent have a screw loose um as weird as that sounds because i mean you are not the one that wants that point two percent increase in dps well sometimes it's a little bit more but that 0.2% increase in DPS to down the boss. You know, you're not the person pushing for that first mythic, the world first mythic Gul'dan kill right now. So maybe you get this legendary and it's a tra- like a transmog item. It's literally this item that says, I have the biggest dick because I am lucky as hell and I am Woo. awesome. And it does nothing more when you're in mythic. You know, maybe it does, the like, this insane thing in Legendary. Heroic where you can solo all the bosses and you're the best in the, the raid group on Heroic. But when you get to Mythic, it is a group effort, and that Legendary does not apply. They literally go, it's a stat stick for you. Enjoy. I think one thing that's trying to trying to go back to the original topic, and it's not like, it's, it's not like we have to, but trying to go back to that original topic, one thing that I'm glad uh, that... I don't know if I'm glad, but one thing that they sh- that Blizzard should not do uh, in order to balance classes is to have it rely on items, and I guess specifically set items or legendaries for you know for the purpose of trying to rebalance classes and or re- sorry rebalance uh, you know the three specs uh, to make them viable. I think that is not that is not the right thing to do. I, like legendaries is the bad idea, but I think sets and trinkets are a nice, unique way. Because I liked the trinkets from Hellfire Citadel. I really enjoy. Like, okay, maybe you needed them to be viable, but I think that's the biggest problem with the spec balance and uh, wad was some specs just sucked. Elemental Shaman. Uh, I don't know, like, uh, part part of me thinks that like. Um tier and like trinkets they should be balanced at like kind of their own category and that general balance between specs uh between specs or between classes or whatever that should be balanced without considering tier and just considering like just stat based trinkets um and things like that that way whenever you know whenever there's like an outlier whenever something weird is is going on where one spec or one class is like totally smoking the other because of these kinds of uh, because of these trinkets, there can be like some sort of hot fix at least that will, I don't know, either either nerf the trinket outright because it's because it's causing like weirdness to happen, or if it's possible to to engineer just make just make the trinket behave differently for different classes. Well, you know, I think they do. I think they can do that. Where they have a trinket yeah. behave differently for for each class or spec. They did. Um, I will always remember. I you've heard me talk about it before, but Girthalak for Red Paladins. Cataclysm. Woo! And tentacles. Tentacles, there, like, it was. Spontaneous tentacles. Bugged, but it was because of they were a two handed. It did this weird thing when you were uh, 
a two-handed, single two-handed weapon spec. It did, it spawned excessively for Rhett Paladins. While it wasn't, it was nerfed for Fury Warrior, or Titan Grip Fury Warriors. So it didn't spawn as much because you could proc it. You know, you had two weapons to proc it more. Right, right. So they can change it and, you know, nerf it for PvP um, to everyone's rejoicing, except Paladins. But, you know, that's kind of a thing they can look at. But I do think bringing special effects to classes, bringing in that nice little change to how they work. Like, I mean, I will always remember being an elemental shaman in, uh, I think it was TOT. I was, or was it TOT, I think, where you would spawn, your four set was spawning an elemental for you. You know, something neat that just spawns something, and then it bugs when you're doing chain lightning. I don't but, remember. Oh, it would spawn excessively when you were chain lightning. Um, and then they yeah, had we'll to talk about ten of things, by the way. Ten? Nothing wrong with ten of things. I don't know what we're talking about. We're going to summon cannon. <laughs> <laughs> I don't see him in but, chat. You know, just, uh, so yeah. somewhere, so somewhere in this podcast, there was information that Blizzard should follow, and they will fix the game, and they will credit us, and we will be world famous. Did we even talk and about the twenty tentacles? Yeah, we did actually. All right. Sort of. <laughs> we I touched... got distracted by the tentacles at the end. <laughs> now, now he's just transfixed. Like, ooh, tentacles. Let me call Kata up. Pissed off they nerfed my tentacle trinket. The the <laughs> spontaneous tentacle thing? Yeah. Don't worry, Chewie. There's going to be an old god in this expansion for you. I know it. I don't know. We'll see. And I think we should wrap it up because we got raid coming up in like an hour and some change. So... And I got no sleep. Ooh, it's gonna be great having your ass fall asleep like right before raid. Yay. Hey, yeah, don't worry. I'm gonna go get more energy drinks and put alcohol in it, and it'll be fun. And then you're gonna be like bitching like an hour into the raid, be like, "Can we hurry up?" Because I'm getting like I'm like really. When have tired. I ever done that? Like I last week. Did you show up last week? Yes, I did. I didn't Both bitch days? at all, though. Yeah. Really? Oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, no. I think I missed Tuesday. See? Bitch ass. <laughs> I thought so. Anyway, uh, Julie, thanks for pinching in since Pizza Hunter was a punk and didn't make it. <laughs> I was here. Yeah, Julie was here to save the day. Even though you didn't say like like too much. It's cool. I appreciate it, man. And and, and, and thanks for showing up. Not really the boys ones. I know, yeah, huh? Problem. Like, dude, if like Senjin showed up, oh, it would have been a, it would have been a fist fight, dude. That would have been awesome. <laughs> Maybe I'll do a lore pal cast next time, where you know, a bunch of us who don't even or really know cast. what. Oh, whatever. I mean, if it's uh, it'd like like, uh, it'd be funny. Like, all of us are like arguing about who's right, even though we can like look it up in a book. We're like, no, no, it's like this. This is how you interpret it. Blah blah blah. blah. But anyway, uh, <laughs> let's get going. We'll we'll get ready for raid in a bit <laughs> thanks well, again for coming time. guys